just an amen. That's an hey, 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 amen. Let's give him another round of applause, would you? Hey, I am glad to be with you today because I heard that this is the best church in Florida. Amen. amen. That my amen section over there. Got it. Good, good, good. But I'm glad you're here today. If you have your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter 1. It's hard to find. Just turn to the beginning of the book, Genesis chapter 1. And I'm going to, let me kind of preface my statements just before we begin. This, uh, you don't want to miss any of the services. I hope you have a little flyer with you. It's a trifold. Uh, one sermon builds upon another. God spoke to me within the last few years, now I'm retired, to become an evangelist to try to wake America up. Everybody say, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Look at the person next to you and say, wake up. Wake, wake up. up. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, got him up. And, and, and I think today we're seeing what's happening in politics with the uh, Trump uh, insurg resurgence. People are waking up a little bit to what's happening in the nation. We watch the news and all we do is get upset and say, what's happening in the world today? Well, may I say to you that nothing is new. It all begins. Everything you see happening in the world today is in the first 11 chapters of the Bible. That's right. First 11 chapters. So I'm calling this series the beginning and the end. Every sermon over the next five sermons, one will build upon the other. And by the end, by Wednesday, in fact, where I've done this before, we had as many on Wednesday as we did on Sunday, or even more. Because one builds upon another, and people say, you've got to go hear what's in this uh, 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 Word of God. And uh, so I hope that you'll do that. I hope you'll call your friends and, and get people uh, involved. I believe, everybody say, Pastor believes. Pastor believes. That when God created the world, he set a timer, an alarm clock. And it's ringing. <laughs> Jesus is coming again. Amen. Amen. The first thing that we see really happening uh, as far as a, a difficulty is what's being taught in the schools today through evolution, which is number one, if we would. But I heard a story. Everybody say, oh my. Oh my. <laughs> and every time you hear a story, there's an oh my. But here was a teacher in, in, in public school, and she was a science teacher. Let me preface my statements by telling you uh, 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 you'll hear my testimony on Wednesday, on, on Wednesday uh, senior adult. I was raised in the streets of New York back in the 60s, born in 52. I turned on, tuned in, and dropped out. I was thrown out of school at 16, of a public school. I was thrown out of Catholic school in the third grade. I was in a gang. We were trouble, if you would. I became addicted to drugs, was selling drugs, which is why I got kicked out of school. And at 17, I joined the Navy, and uh, my life got changed. I learned discipline, but I found Jesus as my Savior. Amen. Praise God. Then I went back to high school. I went to college. I have two BAs degrees, one BA in science and one BA in Bible. Then I went on to get three master's degrees. I have a master's degree in Bible, a master's degree in science, and a master's degree in education. I went on to get a doctorate in biblical backgrounds. So what I'm speaking to you about, I have the background in. So here was a science teacher, and she had her class, and this one little boy says, I believe in creation. She said, you're an idiot. He, she said, let me tell you something, little Johnny. I want you to go outside. And he went out the door. And she said, do you see the grass? She, he said, yes, I, I see the grass. Do you see the sky? He said, yes, I see the sky. You see the clouds? He said, yes, I see the clouds. Do you see God? He said, no. If you can't see it, it ain't there. He came back in discouraged. But on the other side of the class was little Sally, who had been a little bit more trained. She stood up and said, teacher, can I have a second? He should suggest. Johnny, let's do the same exercise. Would you go outside? He did. Do you see the uh, grass? He said, yes, I see the grass. Do you see the sky? He said, yes, I see the sky. And he's getting frustrated. He said, I did this already. Do you see the clouds? Yes, I see the clouds. Come on in. Do you see the teacher? He says, yes. He said, do you see the teacher's brain? He said, no, if you don't see it, it's not real. <laughs> Everybody say, oh my. Oh, oh my. my. <laughs> hey, somebody sent me some emails. i got to share this, Brother Jeff. Somebody sent me some emails. This is the in ingenuity of redneck geniuses. Here's number one. Hey. <laughs> could you could, man, they could cut the grass here at the church in like four minutes. Here's another one. This guy's a genius. This is called a hot tub. <laughs> This might work. This might work. I love this one. Go back, go back. This one here. I too was once a male trapped in a female body. 
Then I was born. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get that. One more. This is, this is kind of bad here. Hillary says, I'm a person with no rights. Too bad we're not illegal aliens. Uh -huh. Oh, oh. Don't get dangerous here. All right. Hey, with your Bibles, turn with me if you would. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Father, bless the reading of our word and our understanding to what we're talking about today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you would, we're talking here, if you would, this, this is my gun. All right. <laughs> the number one question that is asked today is, when will Jesus return? People sing about it, but may I say to you, friends, it's written in the first 11 chapters. In fact, when we see what's happening in the first 11 chapters, if you would, I find the scripture. This will be our, this will be our key verses, the next one, if you would, the key verses uh, for our scripture. Let's read it together. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 and 4. Now, this is where I really base my sermon series, the beginning and the end. Everybody say beginning, beginning. beginning and the end. And I believe, as, as your pastor read, that Jesus was speaking in Matthew chapter 24, and he said, as the days of Noah and preceding it will be the days of the end of the world. Are you with me? Yes. Sir. Is Jesus alive? Nope. No, way. no, Peter picked up on this when he read this second piece of epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both, which I stir up your pure mind by way of remembrance. Say that word with me. Remembrance. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Here it is now. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continued as they were from the beginning of creation. Creation. Well, where are we? If you would, we are very close. Can I use the stage here at the front of the church as a timeline? Right over here, not that you're old, but let's <laughs> say that's the beginning. Everybody say beginning. Beginning. I believe 6,000 years ago, God came and created the world as we know it. How did he do it? Somebody said, how did God do it? He spoke it. Did you hear what he said? Let there be. Everybody say, let there be. Let, let there be. be. He spoke it. Somebody asked me one time, how is God going to destroy the world? Same way he created it. It's enough. That's all he'll say. Forget it. It's over. Remember what he said on the cross? It is finished. It's finished. That's what he's going to say. And I believe that what God has done is in this time, from the time of creation to the time of the flood, 2,000 years. Say it with me. 2,000 uh, years. You say, Pastor, you don't know that. You weren't there. I don't have to be. Yeah, you know, sometimes if you ever get kind of a, uh, you can't go to sleep, you're kind of up, read the book of Numbers. <laughs> read the genealogy. Somebody forgot somebody who forgot. When we read those genealogies, as boring as they are, they give us a timeline. From the time of creation to the time of the flood, 2,000 years. Now, before the flood, the whole world was surrounded by a canopy of water. That's why the Bible says he separated the firmaments, the clouds, and it made the world like a greenhouse so that everybody could live and there was at least a billion people alive during the time of the flood. Just regular genetics tell us that. And, and people were able to live longer because the harmful effects were not there. And the ground was filled with nutrients which made people healthier. That's why they lived longer. And it wasn't until, but that's tonight's sermon, God tilted the planet, God tilted the planet on a 23 degree and caused the ice caps to come and freeze and take the water uh, from the place. You'll hear that tonight. But from the time of creation to the flood, 2,000 years. From the time of the flood to the time of Jesus, 2,000 years. Everybody say what? 2,000. Well, let me be honest. It was really 1,997 years. You said, Pastor, what are you being so specific? It was 1,997 years. Jesus came in, and we're getting ready to celebrate that very, very soon in Easter. Jesus came in on the triumphal entry. 
He came in on the time, and all the people came out and said, Hosanna to the king. Say it with me. Hosanna Hosanna to the the king. king. Why? Because he was going to establish his kingdom. He was 33 years old. Now, he would establish his kingdom when he turned 40. You say, how do you get that? King Saul, King David, King Solomon. The number 40 was significant. And he was the same crowd that called Hosanna to the king, said crucify him, just days later. And they killed him. The Bible says the time clock stopped. Stopped. And then Jesus, when he returned, said, I give mankind a new chance. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Everybody say the church. church. He instituted the church when he was 33 years old. Now, from the time of that death, burial, and resurrection to where we are today, some people will say, oh, that's 2019. No, it isn't. Everybody say, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. Come with me. We date our calendar from his birth, not his death. I remember listening to a Catholic radio, and I was raised Catholic, so sometimes I do that to know what they're doing. And I would listen to this priest show, and the priest had just gotten back from St. Francis or uh, Pope Francis uh, 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 inauguration, and he said, my goodness, the, the Vatican, a buzz, uh, everybody's excited. I said, well, I turned it up. He said, they're getting ready for the Jubilee. I said, Jubilee? What's a Jubilee? I turned it up. Here's what happened. In the year 1000, 33, we had the first Jubilee. That's where the Eastern Orthodox and the Roman Catholics split at that Jubilee. Now, they said the next Jubilee is 2033. I said, well, well, everybody was talking about Y2K and Jesus. His calendar is from his death, burial, and resurrection, which was at 33. So you're going to say, Pastor, are you telling me Jesus is coming in 2033? Of course not. The Bible says no man knows. Everybody say no man. No man. The reason no man knows is we're not really sure how the calendar was. Some calendars in the past were based on 360 days. Some were over. It's really mixed up. It wasn't really till the last four or 500 years that we got an accurate calendar. But I can tell you this much. It's close. It's not decades old. It's not decades old. You're going to say, Pastor, what's going to happen in the year uh, uh, 2033. I don't know. But somewhere in there, Jesus is going to return. But guess what he's going to do? He's going to return in the clouds. Then come seven years of tribulation. It makes up the seven years that were left over here. You see, it's called the time of the Jews. This was the time of the Jews. The Bible says, when Israel's back in the land, and that happened in my lifetime. Are you putting it all together now? Jesus said, when Israel's back in their land, that's going to be ready for me to do my last seven years. Where all the world, all the world looks upon Israel and hates it. By the way, it's in the news every single day. Even what happened in New Zealand, all of this is sermon number five. If you want to know when Jesus is coming, look at the Jew. Look at the Jew. And the Bible says when the Jews are in the land. Oh, this is my fifth sermon. I had a whole off. Trump moved the capital to Jerusalem. Prophetic. The temple's going to be rebuilt, and when the temple's rebuilt, you're going to hear the trumpet. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Then, a thousand years. Now, come with me just for a minute. The Bible says, read that next slide if you would. A day with the Lord is of a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day. Now, some of you are saying, no, wait a minute, Pastor. The world is billions of years old. That's how uh, Carl Sagan used to say it, billions of years old. No, it isn't. <laughs> I remember going to a Christmas party, I guess many, many years ago, and my wife was a, a school teacher, and they had a teacher party, and one of her associates uh, a teacher was there, and I knew that her husband was a, a professor at the University of South Florida uh, in geology. So I walked over to him, we shook hands, and Merry Christmas, and I said, let me ask, you're a deacon in your church, aren't you? He said, oh yes. How do you teach at USF? and believe in creation. He said, I'm an evolutionist. I said, how can you be an evolutionist and be a Christian? He said, Kevin, let me tell you, I've dated all the rocks, all the rocks, and they're billions of years old. I'm telling you. I said, of course they are. All rocks are billions of years old. He said, well, are you one of those who believe in the 6,000 years? I said, yes, sir. God created the world with age. Duh. He didn't create Adam as a baby. He created him as a adult. He didn't create a, 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 a nut and then turned into a tree. 
He didn't put a seed. He, listen, somebody asked me, what came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken! <laughs> Give me a break. Somebody's got to sit on the egg. <laughs> when I said that to him, it was like I smacked him. Look. I, I, I never thought that. Now, my wife's here to test. Several months later, he wasn't teaching her anymore. I don't know what happened. I don't know if he was transferred. Just didn't have that much of a friendship with him. But what I'm telling you is, friends, every scientist who knows the truth can tell you the world was created with age. That's why the scientists are incorrect. We'll get there in just a minute. So, if the world's 6,000 years, why do you mean? Here's what Jesus said. How many days did God create the world? Don't say seven. Six. Six. Six days you'll labor, and on the seventh day, he rested. Yeah. 6,000 years we have human history. 6,000 years. By the way, my friends, you can look at any recorded history, the Egyptian history, the, the Babylonian history, the, the Phoenician history. It only goes back 6,000 years. All of the Chinese, it only goes back 6,000 years. Now, here's what they said. That's the only time people learned how to write. Well, it's because that's all there is. There isn't anything before that. In that 6,000 years, then we're going to live and reign with Jesus for 1,000 years. It's called the Millennial Kingdom. You see, God put his fingerprint. <coughs> he said, fingerprint. I'm not making this difficult. A day with the Lord is 1,000 years. When the end of that 1,000 years, the alarm clock's going to go off, and I am going to return soon, if you will. <coughs> I believe. Now, if you hear nothing else, hear what I'm going to tell you right now. I believe we are living in the last days before Jesus comes. You're going to say, last days, everybody can say, no, no. The last days have been the last 150 years. The last 150 years. What happened? 150 years ago, a man called Charles Darwin came up with a theory that mankind evolved from a, a lower race or people. In the origins of the species, he wrote his book. And it sweeped across. Now listen. For 6,000 years of history, not one man ever denied that God created the world. 6,000 years. Now, they had false gods. The India, the people from India believe it was done by Krishna and other people came up with false gods. Even the Jews had problems keep going back to Baal and Astaroth and all that. You'll hear about that in my sermon to come. So they believed in false gods, but they still believed in a God. Yep. It's only been in the last 150 years that we became so smart that we didn't need God anymore. May I say to you, friends, that is probably the key to the second coming of Jesus Christ. That his own creation denied that he ever existed. Could you imagine being a parent and you heard your son or daughter say, he's not my father, he's not my mother. How that would uh, hit you in the heart, well that's what it's done to God. The second thing that happened is the conflict between the Jews and the, uh, the Arabs. You're say, well that's always been, no it hasn't. You know when I was raised, we heard about Ahab, the Arab, the sheik the sheik of the burning sun, you remember? Sinbad the sailor. Those were all Arabs. They were all friendly. The Jews, the Jews and the Arabs got along. They're brothers. They know that. Their history goes back together. 150 years ago, a new movement began called Zionism. Herzogs and some others, they named the airports in Israel after those founders, and they founded Zionism. The Muslims became so upset, they started a second faith called Wahhabism, which we know now as fundamentalist, radical Muslims. And they've been at war ever since. This is why Hitler, who came about in World War II, decided to kill the who? The Jews. He was using evolution as part of that part. And, and realized that the way to, to kill the Jew is you're going to go cut back against God. We are living in the very last days, my friend, because Israel is now a nation, number three. The beginning of the new world order. Do you know what? It began with Bush number one. By the way, it's on your it's on your double bill, the new world order, if you know that. But Bush number one said, we're in a new era, the new world order. Followed by Clinton, who turned around and said, we're going to be 
There's no more America. We're NAFTA. We're South America. We're Canada. We're all together. The European Union got together. We're all one. Michael Jackson sang the song, We Are the World. All the new world order. Then followed by Bush number two, world order. Trump, by the way, the worst of that was Obama. But Trump came in and said, I am not a globalist. Let's make America great. Oh, you must have read that. Where did that come from? It's because he's trying to change things. I remember back when Ronald Reagan, who by the way was not a globalist, Ronald Reagan, I was in a meeting, about 300 people, and I was, I was in the first row, and Ronald Reagan was about where I am to that thing. A person asked him a question. Do you believe Jesus is coming? I said, oh my goodness, that's a good question. He turned around, I could see his face, he was a little stunned. He said, well, Yes, I do. I believe the Bible, and I believe Jesus is my Savior. But I believe, just like God froze the sun in heaven during judgment, that God can delay his judgment. And if you elect me as president, I want to delay the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because if we keep going the way we're going, we're going to destroy ourselves. I think the same thing as Trump. I think he's given us a little window, a little chance, if you would, before the second coming of Jesus Christ. We are not globalists. God never had that. Number four, the destruction of the family. First time in human history, 6,000 years, we have more babies being born out of wedlock than ever before, than in marriage. Nowadays, living together is accepted. And young people, if you think that's true, that is against the Bible and against the, the commandments of God. Now we're saying a man and a man can get married. A woman, oh, don't become homophobic. Let me tell you, I've led more homosexual to Christ than any preacher I know. I'm not homophobic. I love homosexuals. I don't, I don't love homosexuality. It's a sin. I love adultery, but I don't love adultery. Are you with me? But in the first time in human history, people are marrying and giving in marriage. Isn't that what Jesus said? Number five, the atomic power. I was a young man, about 11 years old. And I went into the city, right where the World's Fair was, by Shea Stadium. And I'm in a building about the size of a football stadium. It had a balcony around, where you have hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of kids. And they had in the middle, you hear this sound, ooh, 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 and then almost deafening like a jet engine. And then the whole room filled with lightning. They split the atom right in front of us. Now, I was probably radiated, but they didn't know that at that time. But I remember the power. We are living in the day that we're able to destroy ourselves by the destruction that God put into every little atom. Are you with me? Some of us grew up on this. We don't realize this is brand new. Brand new. Oh, I gotta move on. An increase in speed in education. You buy a cell phone, and by the time you get home, it's what? Obsolete. Obsolete. That's never been that way. 150 years ago, how did most people travel? Horse and buggy. Horse and buggy. In the last 150, listen, that's how Jesus traveled horse and buggy, or by walking. In the last 150 years, we've had an increase in speed in education. Never before. Daniel said, when people will go to and fro in an increase in speed and an increase in technology, my coming is soon. My coming is soon. We're living in that day and time and hour. And then, lastly, a communication. The Bible says when the Antichrist comes, he'll be seen by every single person at the same time. How could that be? It's because in my lifetime, satellites came about. We're able to see instantaneously what happened in New Zealand, right instantaneously as it is today. That's all new. But it's all been predicted by the Bible. And the Bible says when you see that, when you see that, my time is coming, is soon. Everybody say, Jesus is coming. Jesus, Jesus is coming. coming with you. What are we to do? Here's what the Bible says. In Psalm 11, verse 3, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? May I, may I say to you, friends, over the next five sermons, I want to talk to you about the destructions of five foundations that are destroying this world, destroying our families, destroying our country, and destroying the churches of today. Are you with me? Let's go ahead. We could. Number one, write it in your sheet there. The creation of the world, the creation of the world is the first great event. 
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. My, my friends, it should end right with that. If God said it, I believe it, that settled, settled it for me. That's the way it should be, but it's not. We have people that have PhDs after the name who kind of think you, they know more than you. May I say to you, friends, when I was in the University of North Carolina getting my master's in science, I was called to the uh, professor's office. I had a question on some of the exams and went sitting there. And I, I was always in class raising my hand, pretty, sharing my faith and getting ridiculed for doing it. But I said to him, I said, sir, you're so smart and so intelligent. I'm amazed at how I sit in your class and learn so much. How can a man of that much knowledge not believe in God? He said, close the door. I closed the door. He said, I'm going to tell you something, and I'll deny it if you tell anybody. I believe in God, and I believe in creation. And I think every professor on this faculty does. But if I said it, I'd be fired. Yeah. And he looked at me and he said, only a fool would not believe God created the world. That's right. But your teachers aren't telling you that. Why? Because they're believing a fool. Number two, everything was created with age. Please say, duh. 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 Say it again. Duh. When you say that to an evolutionist, all of a sudden they go, oh, 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 oh. they're speechless. There is an organization that just built Noah's Ark in, in uh, Kentucky. It's called the Creation Research. They have done literally 500 debates in every university in America. You know what? There's a new law. No university is allowed to debate evolution anymore. Because you know what? Out of 500, guess how many they lost? None. They won every 500 debates. You know why? There's more evidence for creation than there is for, for the evolution. In fact, evolution doesn't make any sense. Let me ask a question. If I put an apple on this desk and I come back a year later, what's it going to look like? Yeah. That's the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics is everything's running out. The sun is running out. We're running out of natural resources. Our water is becoming polluted. Our air is becoming, why? Because the world was created to end at a certain time. There's an alarm clock. Evolution says things are getting better. <laughs> Duh, it's not. We're destroying our own self with our own technology, if you would. Number three, write it in your thing. Genesis, the first 11 chapters especially, tell us when the world will end. Before this sermon is over, I'm telling you, we are living in the last days and have been for the last 150 years. Everything changed. We call it the rocket age. We call it the industrial age. I call it the destruction age because we are coming to the close. And it's time for the church and it's time for Christians to wake up, if you would. But unfortunately, and I'm looking at these two good-looking fellas, children over here, we're losing the war. Most of these children are being taught in your schools that evolution is true. What's coming about through that? If we're animals, then we're not accountable to God. We don't have to be married. People have children like animals. They'll have five different children, five different dads. And I'm not criticizing if that's what happened. It, I'm glad you, you had the babies, amen? amen? But that's not the way God designed the family. Something happened. We're losing the war. We see what's happening today, our White House. Our White House was lit in rainbow colors. At the Academy Awards, Bruce Jenner, oh, excuse me, yeah. Yeah. got up and all attractive in a dress. Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much. I said, hey, you should do something about that voice there, honey. <laughs> and the whole audience gave him or her a standing ovation. Are we losing the battle? Yes. Families are being destroyed. Lives are being destroyed. Drug addiction is at an all-time high. Suicide is at an all-time high. Wake up! We're losing the war. So the question comes to us. Who created it? Hit it again if you would. Who created it and when will it come to an end? Keep hitting it until it listens to you. It's all right. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. John chapter 1 says this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus, Jesus created the world, and he did it in seven days. Seven days. 
Six days of creation, the seventh day of rest. And he put his fingerprint and said, this is the way you'll know that I created it. That the world that I created, I also created only the last 6,000 years. Because a day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years as a day. So what do we believe? We believe that God created, and I want you to see verses 1, 2, and 3. Look in your Bible again. Now I'm going to be a scientist, and I'm going to be a theologian. Let me be a theologian first. In the beginning, God brought Barak, that's what it says. That means that God created the world out of nothing. Now as a scientist, here's what we learned. Matter cannot be created or destroyed, only changed. That's correct, unless God created it. In the beginning, God created the matter, the things that we see, in one humongous event. Now we look in verse 3, and we hear, Then said God, let there be. Everybody say, let there be. Let there be. That's the word Sarah. God took the matter and recreated it into what we see today. The earth, the stars, the moon. Can I tell you, everything in the world is made of 118 elements. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. The chair you're sitting, the air you're breathing, the microphone I'm holding, the rug you're standing on, everything. 118 elements, that's all. And how God put them all together. And he did it in six days. Barach, Genesis 1-1. Sarach, Genesis 1-3. And we're living in that today, if you will. I believe, and some people try to differ, you know, some, some Christians try to say, well, each day was a billion years. That's not what it says. The word there is the word yum. Everybody say yum. yum. Your pastor said yum, yum. This is yum, yum. <laughs> Y-O-M. And yum, what that means is it's a 24-hour day. You remember what God said? In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. The morning and the evening was the first day. The morning and the evening was the second day. Morning and the evening was the third day. Morning and the evening doesn't mean a billion years. We believe in 24 hours. You say, well, that's pretty hard. Of course it's hard. But nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Let me move on. Got to move on. I'm going to stop running here, Jeff. Everybody say fingerprint. Fingerprint. How many days are in a week? Seven. Seven. Come on, I got geniuses. I want everybody to say, how many days are in a week? Seven. Seven. You're so smart. Why? This is dumb, dumb, dumb. Do, 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 little Jeopardy here. Why are there seven days? Yeah, I can see your faces. Can I say something? I've been in anthropology classes. I've been in science classes. I raised my hand and I said, uh, by the way, why are there seven days? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Hmm. You don't know, PhD. We have learned over the last 150 years. We have gone to other cultures. People that have never seen white people before. People that have never seen anybody before. And guess how many days a week they have? Seven. Seven. Why? Because God said, I'm putting my fingerprint on it. Now, let, let me give a test here. I know I got some geniuses. How many seas are there on the planet? I'll help you. Seven seas. The Atlantic Pacific. How many continents are on the planet? Seven. Seven. How many chords in the notes? Seven. How many colors in the rainbow? Seven. By the way, there are three primary, the Trinity, and seven colors. If you know anything about the pH chart, it goes from 1 to 14. We have to drink water that is what? Seven. If you have less, it's basic. If you have uh, acid, if you have less or more, it's basic. Both of them kill you. Everybody say seven. 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 Here we see in the Bible, the last seven days. Everybody say seven. seven. There are seven trumpets, seven bowls, seven uh, 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 times of judgment coming, coming, coming. The so number seven we see all the way through. In fact, when we look at the Bible, they marched around the city seven times when the walls of Jericho came tumbling. Seven times Naaman had a dip in the, the water to be healed. The number seven, God says, I'm doing that so you know my fingerprint. Ask a scientist, how does that happen? Let me give another one. I got two geniuses. You're geniuses, right? Just say yes. <laughs> What's the highest number we can count to? You should see their face. What? what? <laughs> Yeah. What's the highest number we can all count to? 
Yeah, I'm looking at your face. By the way, that's the same face the professors gave me when I raised my hand. There is none. It's called infinity. There is no number. It goes on and on. Gazillions, 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 whatever. Why? You know what the professor says? <laughs> What's the smallest number we can count to? Negative infinity. Minus one, minus two, minus three. Why? God said, I'm going to give you a taste of eternity. Where is the end of the universe? Here's what, did you know the Hubble telescope? Do you know why they built the Hubble telescope? To prove evolution. They put it up there, they're gonna say, we're gonna see the Big Bang. All they found is more universe. Now, let me give you a second. <laughs> they, built the they built the microscope, and when they built the microscope, they found the atom, wow. Then they found the electrons, which we have electricity from. Then they found the neutrons. Then they found the protons. Then they found the PSI. Then they found the Z. And then finally, they got a gigantic electron microscope and they found the new element they called the G. You know why? They stood for God and they said, we give up. I believe that if we can build a bigger microscope, eternity is on either side. You can't get any smaller. You can't get bigger. You can't count lower. Are you with me now? Science can't answer that. Young people ask your teachers, oh, why? God put his finger on That's one. Everybody say, seven ages. There are seven churches mentioned in the book of Revelation. Each one of those is a period of time in history. We are living in the last days of the Laodicean age. The church that is lazy. The church that is rich. The church that is apostate. The church that is turning their backs against God. We're living in that time. And God said, I'm putting a fingerprint upon the end of the world. Don't you see it? Don't you read it? It's right there in front of you. Next one, if you would. Number 12. Why? Everybody say, why? why? We have gone to these same cultures. Every culture, every culture. When we found the Chinese, when we found the, the South Americans, when we found the New Guineans, no matter what, guess how many months they had? Twelve. Why? You know what they said? I don't know. That's because God did it. How many foundations in heaven? Twelve. How many tribes of Israel? Twelve. How many apostles? Twelve. Now listen. When Jesus fed the 5,000, guess how many baskets were collected? Twelve. That means it was enough. Twelve is enough. Enough. It means satisfactory. It's enough. Oh, my friends. We're living. Ask these scientists. They cannot, they cannot answer this. Go ahead of another one. How can we prove creation? How's my time? I'm doing good. How can we prove creation? Write it down. Number one, the Bible. The Bible proves God's creation. Next slide, if you would. Here's what the Bible says. Hey, it's taking a little while. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that framed the earth and made, uh, made it, he has established it. He created it, not in vain, without form. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Everybody say amen. 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 Honestly, friends, to this audience, I shouldn't have to go any further. The Bible says it. It's true. One day, you're going to stand before God. You're going to be judged out of two books. You're going to be judged out of the Lamb's Book of Life. That means when you got saved, God wrote your name in his book. And God doesn't have any race. Everybody say amen. amen. It's written in blood. The second one is this Bible. The Bible says his word lasts forever. Forever. And God's going to read the word to you and condemn you in your own sins by the word of God. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. We don't need any other proof, but let's go ahead with some other proof. Not only is the Bible proof, but creation itself. Everybody say creation. creation. You see that world spinning. Our world spins at 24,000 miles an hour. What holds us to the planet? Gravity. Where did gravity come from? I don't know. That's what scientists say. I don't know. The planet is tilted on a 23 degree angle. If it was 24 or 21, none of us would be alive. That's right. It's absolutely perfect. Let me give another. There is a God in heaven. I love this. 
The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth forth his handiwork. You want to see his handiwork? Let me give you one. My gun works. There it is. Everybody say the atom. Yeah. I don't want to be too scientific, but I'm just going to try to give it to you. You see those little orbits around the, around the atom? Now, there are atoms from, from hydrogen all the way up to uh, uh, uranium and all in between. But they all have electrons spinning around the nucleus. They spin at 186,000 miles per second. Guess how fast electricity moves? 186,000 miles per second. Because electrons make electricity. Now, electrons have a negative charge. All right, you with me? That's why electricity is a negative charge. Protons have a positive charge in their nucleus. Now, let me give it to you. If you take two uh, magnets that have the same pole, do they, what do they do together? They repel. They repel because opposites attract and like repel. Why, if that's true, what holds the protons together? Me and my class. Uh, professor? What holds the atoms together? Uh, I don't know. All right, let me give you another one. Electrons have a negative spin. Why are they not drawn to the opposite of the protons? Every atom is a miracle because it absolutely goes against science. Well, professor, how come the electrons and the protons don't unite? And, and guess what he said? I don't know. Everybody say that. I don't know. They can't really say it. It's kind of like a mutter. I don't know. The atom proves there's a God. Let me give you another one. DNA. I have my DNA checked. And I found out I was 100% Irish. We're really 99% Irish. One traveling salesman. I don't know my own. <laughs> but anyway, it's true. 99 and somebody else. But anyway, that's why, by the way, I love what you said. I'm going to give you something else. This is totally off my sermon. St. Patrick was not a Catholic. And St. Patrick was not Irish. That's true. By the way, the Catholic Church wasn't formed until after, by Constantine, uh, St. Patrick was the year 300, the Catholic Church was formed after. He was not a Catholic. Secondly, he was from England. He was arrested or kidnapped in England, became a slave in Ireland, and after escaping, came back to the Irish people and brought them to Christ. Everybody say amen. 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 He was truly a missionary, but that's another whole story. I found out I was, I was Irish from my DNA. Hit the button again. Now here's, listen. In every cell in your body, every cell in your body can make another you. Can you have, you know I have, how is that be, professor? I can take a fingernail and make another Kevin. Guess what they said? I don't know. God said, I'm going to put a fingerprint. Your DNA. There's never been a known person like you. There's never been a leaf. How many billions and trillions of There's never been a leaf that's the same. There's never been a fingerprint that's been the same. There's never been a snowflake falling from heaven that's the same. Why? God said, I want to give you some proof that I am who I am. If everything came from the same place, we'd all have the DNA of the same. If everything had the same place, leaves and everything, all the leaves would be the same. All the snowflakes would be the same. All the fingerprints would be the same. Something changed and God said, I'm putting my finger to prove to you that I'm real. One more. One more. Let's go to the next one. I'll come back to this. Now, I was in, I was in the fourth grade when they wheeled in a, te a, a television with the bunny ears and we saw Armstrong put his foot on the moon. You remember? One step for mankind, one great step for the universe or something. <laughs> now, if you remember, the footprint was about this thick. You see those legs? You remember this? <laughs> Why did they have 16-foot legs? And here's what happened. Scientists said, we know how much dust falls on the moon. We calculated it. Now, if the world is billions of years old, there would be 16 feet of dust on the moon. So when you landed, they had these 16 foot legs to go through the dust. When he landed on the planet, it was this much. They calculated how much dust that was, and guess how long it was? 6,000 years. Now how come you haven't taught that in school? 
Even the moon itself cries to us. Go back to the last slide. In Washington, D.C., and in all of your children's textbooks, is the room of mankind. There's a room about half the size in the Smithsonian Institute uh, uh, of the century, half the size, and it's called the Hall of Man. They have Australia Pisco, Australia Pithecus, Cro Magnum, Australia, all those, all the way through. Do you know that every single one of those has been disproven? One is a pig's tooth, one is an ape, one is an aborigine, but even though 50 years ago those were proven wrong, it's still in your textbook. And it's still in Disney, and it's still in Smithsonian, and it's still in the magazines, as if it's true. The Bible said in the last days people will believe a lie instead of the truth. We're living in it. Time to wake up, if you would. Here's what Romans says. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Say it with me. Clearly seen. Clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. Even the eternal power and Godhead. So every single person is without excuse. Just look at creation, he says. It proves who I am. Number three. The Bible proves it. Science proves it. And creation proves it. Number three. Your conscience proves it. Here's what the Bible says. Hit it, Jeff. Only a fool would not believe. Only a fool. Now listen, listen. When you look, somebody says, look at the dogs, how many breeds of dogs. Yes, but a dog cannot mate with a, a horse and make uh, dorks. <laughs> you can only reproduce it. There is diversity. But that diversity is through genetics, not through a new kind. The Bible says you can reproduce after your kind. You know how many, how many races of people there are? One. What? It's called the human race. <laughs> you know, what about the different colors? Well, the colors of people. But the, that's not because we all came from the same place. Black and white, you know, they're all precious in his sight. We're, we're all really black color is probably what it originated because you lose melanin. You don't gain melanin. You can't pick melanin up. But it was in the genetics. It was in the genetics. Probably one of Adam's child with one darker skin than the other is in the genetics. But you're not going to take two people and make an ape. It's different genetics. We cannot come. Here's what evolution says. Everything, plants, animals, everything comes from the same source. It cannot be. It is impossible. Now, even though it's been proven wrong, it's been proven wrong mathematically, it's been proven wrong by the second law of thermodynamics, it's been proven wrong by mathematics, but it's also been proven wrong by genetics, they'll still believe it. Why? Because the Bible said in the last days people believe a lot, Jeff, if you would. Why is this so important? Next one, if you would. The Bible describes the last days. Let me give you three scriptures. Write these scriptures down. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Everybody think, oh my. Oh my. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn to myth. Now, I'm going to tell you something, friends. I'm not sure about Perry, but I can tell you that 80% of the pulpits in America are not preaching what I'm preaching today. They preach how to be nice, how to be kind, how to be a good parent, how to be successful. That's all good. But we need to preach the doctrines. But they don't want to get involved. They don't want to be controversial. They don't want to talk about creation. Let me give another one. Did you hit it with Jeff? 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Oh my goodness. Covetous, posters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents. Oh my. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affections. That means men with men, women with women. Everybody say gross. Gross, gross. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. If you do good, everybody hates you. Traitors, petty, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Please say, oh my, I got one more. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, it says, For yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail a woman with child and they shall not escape. Next slide. Where are we? Evolution in the last 150 years has brought about both world wars. You say, what? Hitler wanted to make the master race 
He felt by evolution he could get rid of all the uh, inferior people, including the Jews, and we'd have a master race. And he conquered the Aryan nations. Hmm. Communism came about because they said man should make their own decision. You know the number one precedent of communism? There is no God. And that's exactly how it is in America today. Number two, abortion. Give that next slide if you would. This is what Hillary Clinton said. I admire Margaret Sanger enormously, her courage, her tenacity, her vision. She founded Planned Parenthood. This is what she said. The most merciful thing that a large family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. We're living in a day where Virginia, a Bible Belt state, voted to allow a child to be born and then kill it. It's fantasy. And we're silent. In New England and New York, you can have an abortion one day before you're, you're be giving birth. And we're silent. We have people that are being arrested because they will make hate for a, 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 a homosexual marriage, and we're silent. My sermon, if you would, is to wake people up and to say, now is the time. It's time to get busy. It's time to wake up. It's time to have a voice. It's time to make a change. And it's time for the church to be the church and be the salt and the light of the world and change this world and say, that's wrong, that's right, and if you don't like it, you don't have a problem with me, you have a problem with the Word of God. Amen. It's time to stop being popular. Jesus was not tolerant. What? He, was such a, he looked at the people and said, you're of your father the devil, you generation of snakes. Not too tolerant to me, is it? Here's what he was saying. The truth is the truth. And people will either die or live by the truth. My last slide. Go for it all. The next one, I think. Yeah, that's good. Right? In your heart, you're going to be spoken to by creation. You know that song, uh, I Believe in Miracles, Elvis sang it. When you see a newborn baby cry, creation tells you there's God. The word of God. You can't, you can't take a scissor and pick out what you choose and believe. You've got to believe it all. And the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Speak to you about the truth. It's time for you and I to wake up and say this. I'm not going to put up with it anymore. I am going to become vocal and take a stand for what is right. I want to get mad in heaven and tell people the nut is enough. I'm mad that people want to deface the Bible. We are living in a day where we're, we have more translations of the Bible than we know what to do with. May I say to you that with a disintegration? Not that I'm a King James only, I'm not saying that. But the King James only has been the Bible for many, many centuries and many, many times. But in the last days, we have now changed it and manipulated it and watered it down. Do you know that the Methodist Church took the blood out? The Methodist Church took the word virgin out. The Methodist Church took words that are, that are about father and any kind of masculinity. Took it out. Why? Because we're living in a day where the Bible is debased. Time for us to stand up and say, you're not going to destroy the word of God. Everybody say, I'm mad. I'm mad. It's also time for us to be kind of time for us to get mad and say, not only am I upset about that, but debasing life. Only God can take a life. God gave it, God takes it. Isn't it funny that the same group that's against capital punishment are in favor of killing infants? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my! Think! What is going on in the world? My time is to wake up. And then thirdly, if I met it, not only because of debasing the Bible and debasing life, but debasing moral mankind. We don't know what's right or wrong. Somebody says, should I wear this? Should I not wear it? What does the word of God say? Let me tell you something. If you have a question, it's probably wrong. <laughs> Somebody says, you have doubt? Don't. <laughs> Why are we dressed the way we do? We talk the way we do? Something's wrong. And I'm going to close, Brother Jeff, with this story. About 20 years ago, I showed a movie in my church and really came about through this. It's called Time Changers. You can probably find it on Netflix or one of the others. Time Changers. The guy who was the captain of the love boat, he's a Christian, by the way. He's just one of the stars in this movie. It's a Bible college 150 years ago. When? 150 years ago. 
He is transported, this Bible college professor, is transported into our modern life. And he comes and he goes to church. And he stands up and says, what is wrong with you people? That's not in the word of God. What are you listening to this man? Look at the way you're dressed. What? Don't you honor God? <laughs> then he went to a Bible study with sandals. And he turned around and said, what, what are you doing? You're, you're, you can't say that. You can't use those words. Then he went with them to a movie. And he, they had to call the police. Because he said, they used the name of the Lord God in vain. They were nude in that movie. What, what's going on here? Then he went to a mall. And he went to Victoria's Secrets. Oh. <laughs> and he, he took his coat and he's holding it up. And little children came by and said, protect the children. Protect the children. There's, there's nudity around. And I, we're laughing. But what it is, it shows us how our minds have become accustomed. Things don't bother us anymore. My sermon is, it's time to allow the word of God to bother you, Amen. convict you, standing up for what is right. May you stand with me in prayer. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed and no one moving. And I ask you a question.